a lot of people, you watch the news, you see what is being reported, and you expect that to be true and accurate, and you almost get this confirmation bias. Well, this is how it is because this is what I want to believe. This is what I'm told, and that's what is just being reported on on a large scale. But there's a lot about the Arizona housing market that you are not being told, that you don't see just because you're simply not in it. Now, I'm not saying a crash or a big correction is not coming, but right now, that is not what is happening, and the numbers support that. Now, I don't have a side. One way or another, my business will move forward. There's always someone the market is good for, but it's not always good for everyone. So today, I'm going to break down exactly what they are not sharing with you, what the numbers mean, and, and why. And why I'm creating this video is because I had someone call me reach out and they look to move here and what they're hearing you know nationally is the housing market is tanking and here's what's going on and then if you just google arizona housing market you're going to see you know people talking about a crash they're going to talk about a fallout just like this article here you know will the arizona housing market crash in 2023 actually let's jump into this article real quick and you can move numbers and data and stats to support whatever argument you want. So again, right here, it says the Arizona housing market is experiencing a major shift. Although the median sales price was down 2.2 in February year over year, the number of homes sold dropped by 44%. Now, all of those are they're accurate. It's accurate reporting. That is all very accurate. But you also have to look at a bigger picture not so dialed in of where did it fall from? Oh, great. We have fallen. Well, we're still just a very expensive compared to 2020, 2019, even parts, you know, into 2021. Uh, now the Arizona, Arizona housing market is uh, threatened by a similar instance of rising mortgage rates and the possibility of a recession. And buyers and homeowners are asking a familiar question. When will the market crash? And I'm not Nostradamus. I'm not going to be able to predict when that crash is. It, it may come. I mean, the, I think the recession is full on. It's probably going to get worse. And prices will probably drop here. But for right now, for people who are looking to move right now, there is no crash. It is not falling down. And there's a lot going on more than just what you are you know, being told in the big media it's uh it's always funny when you talk to someone's like oh well this is what it says like well here's what we're seeing here's what the exact you know media is reporting and you know even uh this article here by fox 10 news phoenix is one of four cities to see a housing crash similar to 2008 from goldman sachs and i reported on this uh before and again the data they're using now in 2008 prices here fell from a level of an upper twos and down to the, you know under $150,000. It was more than 25%. And what we're seeing then versus now, it's a completely different scenario, different situation. But right now, home prices have actually risen and now and they did decline. Uh, home prices suddenly turned higher as mortgage rates slipped, even though they've kind of gone up again and then back down. Prices nationally rose 0.16% in February when seasonally adjusted, according to Black Knight. In December and January, mortgage rates began pulling back and home buyers surged ahead. And that is what we saw. So we saw a dip in the market. You know, we had that peak in late spring, early summer in 2022. Interest rates rose and you saw some buyers get uncomfortable moving forward. And we also saw inventory go up quite a bit as well. And then we had the pullback. We had home prices fall pretty quickly, but then they quickly rebounded. Now, they still didn't fall to where people, uh, were, I think, were getting a quote-unquote bargain, but they did fall. But now they've started to go back up. So if you're looking to move today, don't think you're going to come in and you know house two days in the market and buy it for $100,000 off list price. It just is not going to happen. Now, if we had an over uh, abundance of inventory, well, then that may happen. And right now, I mean, here is how many homes we have on the market. This is right now live, 10,605. So that's the lowest I've seen in a long time. Um, it's lower than yesterday. So that's single family detached homes for sale. And we need to be almost double that to where we should be in a normal market. 
And yes, yeah, so rates have gone up. I mean, today they're still under six and a half by a little bit, but we simply don't have enough homes for sale for the people moving here. Now let's go into some of the actual numbers again from my favorite report, the Crawford report. Now, all of this green you see here, that's great for sellers. Uh, we're looking at listings under contract. We're up from last month, up from last quarter, almost double, a um, little bit down from last year. Now, normal is 11,000 to 13,000. So yes, we are down in homes sold. Now, if you're, again, if you're looking at the data and cherry picking data, you can have it fit whatever narrative you want. Uh, I mean, I could put a report out that don't drink water, it'll kill you because if you drink so much water a day, then you'll die. But we all know you have to have water to drink. So it depends on what, what your goal is and what these writers' goals is when they're writing. Is it just shock and awe to get clicks? You know, and then is your confirmation bias taking over? And please don't get this wrong. I'm not saying a, a major correction is not coming, but right now the data is not showing that. The data is showing it is still a strong market here. And that could change. And this is also why I pay attention to these numbers daily and what we're seeing. Like this number right here, the listing success rate. It fell from where it was a week ago. It's still up from last month and well ahead from where it was last quarter. And 65% is normal. Above is great for sellers. But we're it's a, it's a good lagging indicator to pay attention to. And a lot of these are lagging indicators. But what I like to see is where is inventory at and month supply and month supply right around two months. Now, typically anything over five months, you really get into that buyer's market and over seven, then it's usually not good. Depends on the market as well and the price point. Um, if we go down to your average monthly sales price, again, we're up from last month and last quarter. But if you're just reporting on this and want to fit a narrative like, oh, House prices tank, you know, you look at last year, 571 versus this year. But what you don't see is, yes, they did fall, but the trend has been upward. So having this information in mind, if you're looking to buy now, it is useful to know what to expect moving forward. And if you want that, that deal on the home, you know, look at the homes that have been on the market for longer, but typically they're overpriced or they're a POS that no one else wants anyway. So it depends on what your situation is and what it is you are looking for. But the Cranford market index, again, upward trend. Above 100, seller's market below is a buyer's market. We're at 136.6, up from last month, up from last quarter. But again, I could spin this into, you know, we've fallen from last year and the year before. So what we're seeing right now is it is not the crash and burn buyer's market that people want to believe. Yeah, I'm not saying it is not happening in you know six to nine months. It takes a while for some of the economic effects to be, you know, to show up in the real estate space. But at the end of the day, people still need somewhere to live. You know, the affordability factor comes into play here, especially with you know capital becoming more expensive for companies. We're going to start seeing some layoffs. We've already seen some layoffs, and that will have a trickle effect as well. But hopefully people here are insulated well enough that that won't affect them. But it, it probably will. But foreclosures are still down. We're still well, well below where foreclosures and uh, notices typically are. So until I start seeing those numbers rise up, again, it's something I pay attention to. At least that way I can advise my clients so they make the best decision possible when they're choosing either to buy a home in Arizona, to relocate here, or even looking at selling their home. But while rates remain high and prices are still high, you're still going to see sellers holding on to their homes that they've lived in for the last few years and not sell. Now, if you're someone who bought a year ago, I would say you're not going to sell for a while. You're probably going to have a negative year-over-year -year appreciation because of the height of the market when you bought in 2022. But for most people who have owned their home over two years, you're going to have enough appreciation where you can sell and get that equity out. But it depends on why it is you're selling, and that is for a whole nother video. But you know, what they're not reporting on is the day-to-day -day numbers, what we're seeing. And I'm working with tons of clients from all over, you know, boots on the ground. My team and I are helping a lot of people. So we're seeing this firsthand, seeing what is happening, seeing multiple offers on my listings. Now, if it were the other way around, we would not be experiencing that. And now not all listings get multiple offers. People are still stuck thinking they can put any price on it. And uh those sellers I choose not to work with because they're delusional and I'm always you know, direct and 
honest. And some people appreciate it. Some people say they can handle it uh, until you're direct and honest with them and they want to test the market, which I'm not uh, in the business of testing markets. So this is just what we're seeing for right now. We'll see when that crash happens. And some of you will be thrilled to see a crash. But for right now, probably for the next six to nine months, we're not going to see a major downturn. But again, I'm I'm just uh, my hypothesis here. Yeah, my crystal ball is out of batteries. So I'll have to get some new ones for that. But let me know, what do you think? Do you think this upward trend will continue? Will it pull back? And what, were some, what would be some metrics you would pay attention to to make your best judgment? I want to know just, uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll learn something from you. Maybe I'm missing something that is standing right in front of me. But as always, watch this next video. It's Rich Brecklin, your Arizona real estate agent. I'll see you on the next one.